big news for businesses here in San Diego. Governor Gavin Newsom lifts the stay at home order across the state. Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee in for Barbara Lee Edwards. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. That means restaurants will be able to resume outdoor dining and salons and some similar businesses can reopen for indoor services with some restrictions. The state confirmed the move back to the purple tier this morning. News 8's Kelly Hassadal has more on what this means for San Diegans and reaction from two business owners. Kelly. Well, we're at Great Maple in Hillcrest, where the staff here is preparing to reopen their outdoor patio sometime this week. Now, the owner says he's certainly glad that the stay-at-home order has been lifted, but he says they have a lot of work ahead of them. So, yeah, it was a big deal. It was a big surprise. I had not expected it um, that quickly. Johnny Rivera, the owner of Great Maple, spent the day preparing to reopen his restaurant for outdoor dining. Wishful thinking it'd be nice to be open tomorrow, but it's impossible. The shift back open comes after this order. announcement by Governor Gavin Newsom. Month. All regions effective immediately are no longer in the stay at home order, which means San Diego is back in the purple tier. Restaurants can resume outdoor dining. Salons can reopen with restrictions. Retail can allow 25% capacity. Places of worship, movie theaters and gyms can reopen for outdoor services. Here's how the governor explained why the stay at home order was lifted. We project forward over a four week period and we determine ICU capacity either meets or exceeds 15%. The state predicts a month from now, Southern California's ICU capacity will hit about 33%. The governor says we're seeing a flattening of the curve, but we're not out of the woods yet. There's so many moving parts and again, it comes back down to we have to be safe. Rebecca Hyde Edwards, so owner of the Hyde Edwards Salon and Spa in Little Italy, says the back and forth is confusing. Obviously, we want to go back to work. That's the number one thing that we all want, you know, but I think it's I think for me, the frustration is, you know, there's never any warning. You know, you're supposed to all of a sudden drop and go. I sublease the back part of my building and shrunk my salon down because I can't afford to keep this juggling at like many small businesses just in the same situation. I mean, you know, I'm holding on by by a very, very small thread. Rivera agrees. But let's be very clear for anybody. This has been a huge impact for restaurant business. There isn't one restaurant that hasn't been completely, uh, if not annihilated, completely almost to their knees. Both owners are doing the best they can to survive in these uncertain times. Kelly Hesedal, News 8. And things continue to trend well when it comes to new COVID cases in San Diego. 1,437 cases were reported today out of more than 14,000 tests for a 10% positive rate. Another bit of positive data, the number of COVID related hospitalizations in the county dropped below 1,500 for the first time since Christmas. 428 COVID patients are still in the ICU though, and 279 deaths were reported last week, making it the deadliest week yet of the pandemic. You heard it, saw it, probably even felt it. The howling wind, pounding rain, and even hail that peppered San Diego County today. And there is a lot of snow up in our local mountains. We have a first look at your microclimate forecast in just a moment. First, though, today's crazy weather. Toppled trees caused power outages and caused other damage. News 8 Steve Price shows us what else was affected by the wild weather. A bizarre storm hit our county Monday. Wind gusts topping 50 miles an hour in several areas. Outdoor dining tents like this, no match for Mother Nature, who threw several surprises our way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hail from San Carlos to Carlsbad and several spots in between. It took winter a while to get here this year, but now it's quickly making up for lost time. <laughs> Trees blocking roads, falling on cars and trucks, and in Point Loma crashing into a carport that then collapsed onto multiple vehicles. We also had calls of power lines knocked down, with sdg &E reporting thousands of customers losing power. And in National City, a shopping center sign toppled over. Our officers are going call to call to call. For CHP officers, the chaos started before the sun came up. This happened on the 805 in National City, Luckily, no one was seriously injured. Big rig hit the uh, center divide wall and hit, a, hit another vehicle and uh, ended up jackknife uh, blocking several lanes for, for a few hours. 
the weather so nasty the county had to shut down its vaccination superstation near Petco Park. It's like we're not going to get our vaccinations. Unfortunately, not today. San Diego police delivering the bad news as drivers showed up for their appointments. It's just frustrating. Gary and Karen Green were turned away at 7 a.m., then came back later hoping the site would reopen, but no such luck. Just trying to get the appointment and not being able to get it. You know, finally you get it and then it's called off, so yeah. very frustrating. The county officials say this superstation will also be closed Tuesday morning because heavy rain is in the forecast. News that's disappointing, but Gary understands these conditions make doing even simple tasks difficult. I couldn't even open either door to the, to, outside. To the outside. The wind was so strong. Very strong. So I would say, it, based on the tents here, I would say it probably made, a, it probably made some sense. Those who had appointments will get emails telling them they've been rescheduled for Thursday. Steve Price, News 8. And you heard that one gentleman talking about how strong the winds were. Take a look at some of the strongest gusts around San Diego, and they're not all in the mountains or in the foothills. Yeah, sure, Vulcan Mountain at 69 miles per hour, but Solana Beach at 59 miles per hour, per hour and Del Mar and Mission Beach at 55 and 56 miles per hour. So some very strong winds across the county, and the high wind warning will remain in place along the coastline until 10 p.m. tonight, and a winter storm warning in the mountains. I just looked up in the mountains and they're still seeing pretty good amounts of snow coming down. We have a high wind warning out in the deserts, a wind advisory in the inland microclimates and offshore in the ocean, a gale warning. Now I can't imagine anyone thinking they're going to go out in the ocean right now. Looking at temperatures, uh, Vista as well as Ramona and Alpine record daytime high low temperatures. It was cold in the mountains, 29 at Mount Laguna, downtown 57, 54 in Chula Vista, 56 in Oceanside. Current Doppler radar, Scattered showers here and there. We will continue to see rain showers come down, maybe some hail, snow in the mountains. And for you folks over the coastal area over the next three days, a slight warming trend, but more rain arriving on Thursday as the next storm, this one tapping into an atmospheric river, potentially bringing heavy rain. I'll have your complete forecast in a bit. All right, Sean, thanks. And tonight, sadly, we are learning of an apparent storm-related tragedy. A father and daughter in L.A. both died today, electrocuted by downed power lines. Police say a man in his 50s and a woman in her 20s were killed during the early morning hours in the Panorama City neighborhood. They say dad and daughter heard a loud popping sound, so they went outside to figure out what was going on and were electrocuted. Video has been released of a San Diego Sheriff's deputy shooting and killing an unarmed man as he ran away from the downtown jail. As News 8's David Gottfordson reports, the deputy has since resigned and is now facing a charge of second degree murder. Is that how he appeared on May 1st, 2020? Yes, it was. Deputy Aaron Russell was in full uniform, arriving on foot to work at the downtown jail, when right in front of him, a man escaped from the back seat of a State Park Rangers patrol car. 36-year-old Nicholas Bills had slipped one hand out of his handcuffs. He slams a door on another ranger and runs away from the jail. Deputy Aaron Russell pulls his pistol and shoots, hitting Bills at least four times, killing him. Mr. Russell removed his handgun from his sight holster, uh, pointed his firearm at Mr. Bills as he ran uh, northbound. Russell resigned in the wake of the shooting. Now he's charged with second degree murder. Video of the shooting was played publicly for the first time Monday during a preliminary hearing. Attorneys for the former deputy made it clear they intend to argue the shooting was justified. Look at the top of the video. You can see a pair of red shoes belonging to a nurse who was standing nearby on the sidewalk. And as you see that, does that uh, refresh your recollection on what that is? Yes, I believe it was a person walking by. I don't recall the name. During cross-examination of a San Diego police sergeant, the defense team implied that nurse could have been in danger and the handcuff still on Bill's wrist might have been mistaken for a weapon. Were you able to determine in the course of your investigation whether or not the cuff that Mr. Bills had removed from his left wrist was hanging down loose or whether he had gripped it 
in his hand to keep it from dangling. I, I, I did not. I don't know. I didn't know how he was holding it. I, I, did, I didn't come to that conclusion. Testimony in the preliminary hearing will continue tomorrow. When it's all over, the judge has to decide whether there's enough evidence for the case to go to trial. Carlo? Disturbing video, David. What other evidence will be presented tomorrow? Well, we're hearing there are three more surveillance cameras, but it's unclear when those videos would be shown in court. Uh, we will hear from the two park rangers who are transporting bills to the jail when the escape, ha when the escape happened. All right, we look forward to seeing and hearing more evidence in this case. David Goffertson reporting live. Thank you, David. A 17-year-old facing a murder charge in the stabbing death of a hiker in Carlsbad made another appearance in juvenile court today. Lawyers for the teenage boy, who News 8 is not identifying because he's a minor, wanted him released to his family with a GPS ankle monitor. The judge denied that request. The teenager is accused of stabbing 68-year-old Lisa Thorberg to death on November 23rd along a hiking trail in Hosp Grove. A hearing has not yet been set on a petition to try the teen as an adult. He'll be back in court on March 29th. Tonight, a key step in the impeachment of former President Trump is complete, setting the stage for a historic trial next month. Just a little while ago, House impeachment managers delivered to the Senate the single article that passed the House back on January 13th, indicting Mr. Trump for his role in inciting the deadly attack on the Capitol the week before. Coming up at 530, we will have a full report from Capitol Hill with what to expect in the coming weeks. President Joe Biden has signed an executive order reversing a ban on transgender people serving in the military. The order was signed today during a meeting between the president and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin. The reversal also prevents any service member from being forced out of the military because of gender identity. San Diego Pride issued a statement about the reversal of the ban. It says in part, San Diego has the highest concentration of LGBTQ military personnel in the world, making today's historic executive order by President Biden ending the ban on transgender service members that much more meaningful to our local community. To read the full statement, visit CBS8.com and click on the link to this story.